When it comes to keeping all of our devices running in this modern age, power banks have become pretty much ubiquitous. Whether it's your smartphone or your laptop, it's a great way of keeping them charged up and running when you're away from the home or the office. And today we're looking at a really interesting power bank. This is by the company Ohai. Uh, it is the future starship, great name, specifically the 240 watt, watt uh, 27,600 milliamp hour version. This power bank is pretty much the highest capacity you can have if you want to take it on a plane, so it is quite an interesting power bank to look at, and it certainly has a lot of features up its sleeve. Now, I was sent this by Ohio to have a look at, uh, but that really hasn't influenced my review at all because I've kept the same kind of parameters I do for all my power bank reviews. Um, and this one's really cool. First off, let's talk about the design. The design is awesome. Um, this is really, really fun. To me, it looks almost like a, a fuel cell from like a sci-fi movie. Um, super cool, black, gray, and with yellow accents. Um, I really, really like the look of this power bank. Um, it's one of the more fun ones that I've come across. And if you've watched any of my previous power bank reviews, you'll know that I do like a bit of, a bit of fun design. Um, it's not all uh, design over function though. I'm really pleased that this has some of the best um, specs that you can pretty much get. So first off, in the name, you've got about 240 watts, and that refers to the maximum output of this power bank. Now, that is limited, in the loosest sense of the term, to 140 watts per each of those USB-C outputs. Now, that's to a maximum of 240, right? So if you've got 140 watts, which is the maximum off the USB-C port 1, then you can have a further 100 watts off USB-C port 2. Um, I mean, unless you're charging a laptop, you're highly unlikely to hit those numbers. But it's really cool to know that you do have that capability. Now, it also has a USB-A port. Now, I know USB-C is very much the standard for pretty much everything, but we all have slightly older devices lying around that could do with charging, whether it's an older camera that uses a micro USB cable, or perhaps a smartwatch that, you know, your cable that came in the box is a USB-A cable. This will handle it. It'll output up to 22.5 watts on your USB-A port, which is still very, very good. And again, that comes off that 240 watt total. So if you're charging, say, at 20 watts on USB-A, you could do 140 watts and then 80 watts on the two USB-C ports. I hope that wasn't too confusing. Um, the gist of this comes down to this. If you are charging a laptop at 140 watts, if you're not charging another laptop, the chances are you will be able to charge your phone and another device at pretty much its max charging speed. There are very few devices that will draw over 80 watts that aren't laptops. Um, I think some smartphones might go over 80 watts these days, but very, very few of them, right? We're talking a minority. So this is an extremely capable power bank when it comes to keeping your devices running. Now, the other thing that's going to determine how much you can charge your devices is the capacity of this power bank. Now, this is measured in watt hours usually, and in this case, this power bank cites about 99 watt hours of capacity. What does that mean? What is, what is 99 watt hours? Well, if you've got an iPhone 16, you can charge it just over five times. If you've got something like a Samsung S23, you're looking at about the same. You can fully charge something like a uh, MacBook uh, Pro 16, and you can also um, fully charge something like a DJI Mavic twice. So that's the kind of capacity that this battery pack has. That is a lot of charge in this kind of device. And because you have that high speed charging, the 140 watts max output on that USB-C port, you could charge something like that MacBook um, to 50% in half an hour. That is a seriously fast charge time. Um, so that's really cool as well. Now I can actually test on power banks what kind of capacity they really have. Because although a device might have 150 watt hours of capacity stated, um, the actual amount that you're able to use is usually limited, right? Because it's powering its screen. It's got various circuits inside it. You will never get that actual number that the, that the manufacturer says. Now, my rule of thumb is if it's within 10% of the manufacturer stated number, that's really good going. That's, that's good, right? To me, that means they're being honest. They're telling us, hey, this is the capacity. Um, and then when I measure it, if it's within 10%, I'm like, that is a good number. That's very trustworthy. So this states on the back of it that it has 99.36 watt hours of capacity. Now, my device uh, that I measured it a couple of times came out at about 
92.2 watt hours. That is incredibly good. That is um, much less than 10% loss. And I'm very happy to say that this device will indeed perform as it's supposed to, uh, which is excellent. Talking about that output number, now I don't have any devices that can draw 140 watts. Like my Dell XPS laptop that I use um, can charge at about 80 or 90, uh, which this does without any issues. Um, I plugged in a couple of cameras. They don't draw very much these days. So realistically, that 240 watt number is fantastic and the 140 watt max is more than you'll probably need. I did charge three devices at the same time. Um, it worked very well, I can't complain there. Equally, the other thing this can do is pass through charging. That was interesting because I didn't really see it mentioned on the website. But if you plug this into a wall charger and you plug in a device at the same time, you can charge this power bank and the device through it at the same time. Now, that is not a given. Many smaller power banks can't do this. So it's really nice to see um, that Ohai has made that possible in this case. So how much is this going to cost you? Because at the end of the day, that is gonna have a large bearing on a purchase decision. And power banks like this do not come cheap. They have high capacity and high output and that means they're expensive to produce. In this case, the RRP on the website seems to be around $200. Currently, it's at $130, and I think they've given me a discount code, um, which is copied in the description below, that will get you a further 15% off. I think that's worth about $20 or so. So if you want to buy one, um, there are links below and some discount codes that you can use too. I think they're affiliate ones, so I might benefit from them, um, but don't let that sway your decision. Please choose purely on your use case and what you need. To follow the um, capacity and indeed the output of this device, it does have a built-in display. And the built-in display is really nice. Um, it's stuck with this futuristic theme. It looks a bit like you're looking at a control panel. Um, no you know, silly graphics. You've got a nice battery indicator with the percentage below it, so you can tell exactly what the percentage is. Then each of the ports has its own indicator, which tells you whether it's um, input or output that you're that it's doing plus the actual wattage that the device is drawing and then you also have an indicator that shows whether the device is currently discharging are you charging a device or it is charging now both of those indicators can be um, lit up at the same time because as I said this can do pass through charging last but not least on the top of the device you actually have a further LED indicator just in case you didn't want to look at the display and when the device is charging or discharging, it will be flashing in different ways and different colors to tell you what it's doing. So if it's flashing in yellow, for instance, you know it's doing a high output uh, charge to a device that's so using the USB-C power delivery. If it's uh, like a bluey white, then it's just charging normally. And I think there's also a denomination for trickle charging as well, which I think is green, um, but that's in the little manual that comes inside the box too. I'm just working on the B-roll for this video and I realized I hadn't actually mentioned that there is a button on the side that you can press that shows you the battery status when it's not charging or discharging and also just as a way to shut down the device should you wish to do so. You don't need to, it'll automatically power off and power on as you plug things in, but the button on the side is probably an important thing to mention. So press it on the side and you can see the battery status at a glance, uh, which is nice and handy too. So just something to additionally keep in mind. Now, inside the box, the box is really nice, by the way. I mean, come on, this is pretty cool, right? It's it's a pretty snazzy little box. Um, at the bottom of it, you have to pull the inside bits out. It also has a USB-C cable. USB-C cables are really important because uh, obviously they allow you to charge and discharge devices. And when you kind of get to this level of device, they unfortunately become even more important. And there is kind of an added bit of um, attention that you're going to have to pay to them. And that's specifically to what the cable is rated at. Because when you start hitting sort of above 80 watts, you might actually find that the USB-C cable that you've had hanging around the house for say five to 10 years time isn't actually capable of fast charging. There have been various different standards of USB-C cable and indeed USB-C power delivery standards. And so not all cables are produced equally. The one included with this box is 140 watt capable. Now, given that you can only really charge one device at 140 watts, keep this charging cable with the device and you'll always be able to use its max output. 
However, if you have a really old USB-C cable, you might even be limited to 30 watts. Um, so your max output would be somewhere in the region of 170, what, 190 watts rather than the 240. Again, this isn't saying it's gonna affect everyone. And if you have devices that draw that much current, chances are you probably already know about the USB-C standards, but it is something to bear in mind. Now, thankfully, USB-C cables have got really cheap. So even a fast charging cable is relatively affordable. Um, but it is something to keep in mind. Obviously, with the USB-A cable being 22.5 watts, it's not something you need to worry about as much. I found that most of my USB-C cables can handle 60 watts, but there are a couple that are limited to 30, so just keep that in mind too. Last but not least, I wanted to just come back to the cost of the device, because I, I know it is a lot of money, right, when you're talking uh, around £100 for something like this. But there is kind of a reason for it. And that is that the cells that they're using, they say, are high quality cells. And that means they're actually not very cheap. Again, perhaps I might know just slightly more than the average um, layman here, because I've bought quite a few um, of the battery cells for other projects. Um, these are 18650 battery cells. I think they're roughly the same type as you're going to find in uh, electric vehicle batteries these days. And if you're going to buy a high quality cell, um, I believe this is my Samsung cell. Yep, this is a Samsung 18650 cell. This is a high capacity one. So I think this is about, yeah, 3,450 milliamp hours. Um, this will cost you between seven and 15 pounds, depending on exactly which spec you buy. Um, this green one here, I believe is by LG and is also 3,500 milliamp hours. And this has six of these cells in it. So you've got four at the bottom and then two on top at the back. And then you've got place the screen and circuit boards, et cetera, at the front. So given that they're saying they're using high quality automotive grade battery cells, and I have no way to check this, so I have to go on their words, the actual battery cost in this probably isn't that cheap. Like, yes, they're going to be buying them cheaper than me. I'm not buying in bulk. Um, I only have like 15 of these. But it still kind of points towards a high quality device. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, if it is indeed using high quality battery cells, then it, it, there is a certain cost that they're going to have to cover, which would explain the um, relatively high retail price, plus, of course, all the custom molding and, and so on and so forth. So this is a, a nice power bank. Um, as an aside, just in case, if any of you do have these 18650 battery cells, you might have them for something like torches, that's something, one of my main use cases for these, um, do try and keep them inside the plastic cases they come in, rather than leaving them lying around, just a safety thing. These can be dangerous if they short circuit, right? So do try and keep them in those boxes and don't just chuck them in a drawer like a AA battery. They're a little bit more dangerous than that. Um, of course, if you've got them inside a battery pack like this, they are safe, which is nice. Um, this is a recognizable brand uh, that has been doing this for a while. And my testing of this over the past, ooh, it has now been four weeks that I've had this, has been really good. I've used this for everything from charging my device whilst working outside in the garden, uh, using it on some projects whilst I was powering my cameras. Um, I always keep power banks in my backpack for uh, longer filming sessions because all my cameras can be powered off USB-C and this did a great job of powering my, my cameras for long periods of time. So yeah, this is a lovely little power bank. Um, cool design, good features, great features actually. And overall, I think this is a really nice piece. So if you have any questions about the Ohio Future Starship 240 watt uh, power delivery 3.1, um, 27,600 milliamp hour battery power bank, I think that's the full title, uh, do pop them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you think. Do you like the design as much as me? I have to say it's one of my favorites. Um, equally, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up because that helps me and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks so much for watching. I hope I see you again next time. Goodbye.